Hey guys, welcome back to Fantasy Tip. My name is Julian, and in today's episode, we're going to be talking about players that you can consider dropping from your team for week two of the fantasy hockey season. Before we get started, guys, please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. I'm trying to get an ambitious goal of 5,000 subscribers by the end of the season, so every subscription really helps me. Thank you so much. Without further ado, guys, I hope you did well in your weeks last week. If not, don't worry. I got you covered for this week. Let's jump into the players that you can consider dropping. So starting with forwards and first on the list is Brendan Gallagher. And I wasn't super high on him coming into the season. Brendan Gallagher is playing this year on Montreal's third line with Jake Evans and Joel Armia. Just not the greatest line in the world. He is still getting top power play time, but as of yet, that power play has not clicked. And his deployment is just isn't enough for me to roster in shallower leagues. If you're in a super deep league, he still shoots the puck a good amount, so he'll get you those shots on goal, which gives you a pretty safe floor, but honestly, not my favorite option in the world. There are probably better options on your waiver wire in shallower leagues. Next is Patrick Hornquist, who's 58% owned, and he only had 9 minutes and 48 seconds of ice time in his first game. He's currently skating on the third line and the second power play in Florida, so his deployment is not great at all. His value has really gone down this year. He had a lot of value last year because he did play on that top power play. That's not the case this year, and he's playing on a low line as well. Don't love him this year. You can drop Hornquist from your team in the majority of leagues. In hitting leagues, he's a little bit more valuable, so I might hold him a little longer, see if maybe his deployment gets a bit better, but right now he's pretty high on my drop list. Next is Jean-Gabriel Pajot, who's skating on the Islanders' third line as their third line center. He's also getting second power play time, which is not the greatest deployment in the world. He only had just over 13 minutes of ice time in his first game. Not my favorite option in the world, and I can't get why he's 50% owned. In leagues that count hits and leagues that you need face-offs, he's a little bit more valuable, so I probably would hold him on your team just for those reasons. But in his first game, he was a minus two and didn't hit at all. So if that trend continues... He's going to be someone who's going to be dropped in the majority of leagues. For now, I think he should only be owned in leagues that do need faceoff wins and hits as well as points. But he's probably owned in some leagues that don't count those things as well. And those, you can drop him. Next is Denis Gurianov. And much like Patrick Hornquist, his ice time, not great. Only 11.56 of ice time. And that's with Robertson out, one of their best players. And he's playing third line with Radek Faxa, which is not that great. He is getting second power play time, so it's not the worst deployment in the world, but definitely not my favorite situation. Gurianov is a drop for me in the majority of leagues. Next is Anthony Duclair, and just like the other guys I've been talking about, his ice time in his opening match was only 9 minutes and 19 seconds. Really not great. He's playing on the fourth line with Jumbo Joe, and he's getting basically no power play time. He'll probably get elevated to the first or second line if there's an injury, but right now he has next to no value, and I drop him in the majority of leagues. Jumping into defensemen now, and this list is pretty much the same as it was last week. First on the list is Matt Grizzlick of the Boston Bruins. Guess what? Charlie McAvoy is the guy on that top power play in Boston, so Grizzlick doesn't have that much value, should not be owned in 46% of leagues. That being said, Boston does have a decent schedule this week, so if you do want to keep him just for those off nights, I don't mind that. After that, probably a drop. Next is Ty Smith of the New Jersey Devils. And he's currently on IR, has not played a game yet, but even when he comes back, he'll likely be manning only the second power play in New Jersey, which isn't that great. I don't expect Ty Smith to have that great of a season. His ownership percentage has already gone down significantly since I included him last week, and I think it should even more. Next is Mike Riley of the Boston Bruins, and he's a guy who was good towards the end of the year last year, but he's not going to get any power play time this year, and he has basically no peripherals. He's not super useful this year. Easy drop in basically every league. Next is Duncan Keith. In the one game I saw from him, he did basically nothing on the score sheet. The only thing that he put up on the score sheet was a single block shot. He's not going to get a lot of points this year. He's not getting power play time. So the only value he does have is block shots, and he's not going to block enough shots to merit a spot on your roster. Duncan Keith is a very easy drop this year. Next is Adam Boquist. And Columbus won against the Arizona Coyotes 8 to two. And Boquist managed to get zero points. Yeah, I'm not super high on Boquist this year. He's getting second power play time on Columbus, but Columbus is not a good team. And even when they went off and scored a bunch of goals, he still couldn't get on the score sheet. Not a guy I'm high on this year. Easy drop for me as well. 
Moving on to goalies now, and it's too early in the season for me to really suggest dropping goalies who are getting starts right now, so I'm not going to. Right now, all I'm going to suggest is dropping Jake Ottinger, who's still 18% owned, even though he's playing in the AHL right now. Like, Dallas has so many goalies. Holpe and Hudobin are the ones getting the starts right now. And even if one of them gets injured, Ben Bishop is going to be coming back sometime soon as well. So Ottinger may not see a single start in nets in Dallas this year. So he's a guy that I drop pretty easily. No point having him on your team anymore. Next is Tuka Rask, and he's owned in 10% of leagues. And I don't really get that because he's unsigned. He's injured. He can only return in January. And even if Boston does sign him, they already have two really good goalies that are splitting the starts in Boston. So why are people owning Tuka Rask? It just if you have an NA slot, that's where he's that's where he is right now. You can you can keep him on your NA slot, I guess. If you if you have one, you might as well do it. It's not someone I'm super high on. If you have him on your bench or something, easy drop for me. Now, these are the only goalies I'm suggesting dropping, but there are other goalies like Ilya Samsonov, who I'm a little bit worried about now. He was supposed to be the starter in Washington this year, and so far, Vitek Vanacek has gotten two out of two starts. Am I super worried about it? No, not yet. I mean, it's only two games. Vanacek is a good goalie, but I still think Samsonov is probably going to get half the starts. It's going to it's gonna even out over the course of the season. Obviously, you guys drafted him a little bit early if he's split in the starts 50-50, and that's what I warned you guys about in the offseason. He wasn't someone I was crazy about because of that risk of splitting starts. The other guy that you guys might be thinking, hey, is he a drop, is Spencer Knight of the Florida Panthers. Sergei Bobrovsky has started both games for Florida, and because of that, people are like, well, is Knight going to start any games? Yeah, don't worry. Just be patient with Spencer Knight, okay? Because Sergei Bobrovsky is being paid a lot of money to play in Florida. So Florida wants him to work out. He hasn't been very good the last couple of seasons, so I think it's only a matter of time before Spencer Knight starts getting more and more starts, and eventually starts getting the majority of the starts. Don't worry too much about that. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. Please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Hope you guys enjoyed the content today, and I'll catch you in the next episode of Fantasy Tip.